What's going on? It's your boy Icy Jones. We are in the one o'clock hour and just had West West in the building. Now I have my guy in the building, man, but God situation. Huh? We finna get him right. Hold on, let him get him right. Yeah. Alright, you good? <laughs> All right. Preston Robinson the third. Yes, sir. What's going on, man? Let me get you right. Hold on. Yes, sir. There we go. There we go. That's it. I may. I may. So the reason um, I'm smiling and I'm excited, man, is because uh, me and this guy, man, been in ministry for some time. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. I was I was raised in in the church, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. So you were too. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, pastor. Yes, sir. Uh, you were over church. You still over church. Yes, sir. See how it go. Yeah. How old are you? Uh, twenty four. Twenty four years old. Yeah. Right. And let me get straight to it. This past April. So look. Let me tell the real story because I had no idea. Yeah. All right. There was this girl who got shot seventeen times by her boyfriend's side chick. And I watched the story and I shared it to um, my story on Facebook. Obviously, me and Preston are friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He then seen that and inbox and said, I'm going through that right now. Because mm -hmm. she's still alive. She's struggling to walk, but she's alive 17 times. Mm. So then I'm like, what you mean you're going through yeah. that right now? <laughs> he said, man, I was robbed and shot in April yes, sir. of this year. Tell me about how that happened. What where were you at? What was going on? Yeah, oh uh, man, I was um I had actually, you know, moved. I had moved to uh, Mississippi and I started pastoring in a small town called Leland. Okay. And uh one night uh I had just got back from doing a revival and uh, we used to do this thing called uh Sunday on Monday. Okay. And so I was out of town, you know, preaching in I believe I was in Texas that Sunday. And so I came back, you know, Monday night and we had an awesome service, uh I mean, awesome time. Uh, you know, I'm on my way home, you know, feeling good, you know. High on the going spirit. Great, high on the spirit, you know, <laughs> just got back. And uh, I got home and uh, I left back out, you know, try to get something to eat. But, of course, you know, down there, things closed early. early. So uh, I had went to a little gas station called Double Quick. It's pretty popular down there. Okay. And uh, I had went down there and uh, on my way back, you know, I seen a car that I recognized. Uh, and, and, you know, it was, I thought it was somebody that, you know, I knew. And so yeah. uh, they were flagging me down. And so I pulled over on the side of the road. And when I got out, you know, to try to see what was going on, gun was pointing out the window. And so, you know, I stopped, you know, I stopped right down my tracks and they got out. And, uh, you know, from there, man, they took my backpack, you know, went through everything that was on me, you know, emptied my pockets. And uh, from there, you know, he told me not to move. I don't know if I made a wrong move or what, but next thing I know, man, they opened up fire on me. At first, uh, they shot me four times in my arm, and I fell on the ground. You know, I remember looking up at them. Next thing I know, one of them came, and he just started shooting me straight in my body. And uh, yeah, the only thing, thank God, I was laying, you know, face down. And so I was able to kind of, you know, um, I guess take away some of the impact of the, of the bullets yeah. and stop it from hitting uh, my heart. Yes. But, yeah, they, yeah, so they hit me a total of 10 times. 10 times. Yes, sir. Four in your arm, six yeah. in your body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, okay, so this is a late evening? Yeah, this was probably, um, so I had made it home, came back out, so it was probably like 11 o'clock at night. 11 o'clock at night? Yeah. And is this one of them roads where ain't no lights? Yeah, you know, down there on the highway, you know, certain spots, it's dark. You know, right. there's no lights. Out of into the south. Yeah, there's no lights. Um, You know, you get out there in, the, in that grass, it's a wrap. Okay. So <laughs> you know? who called the ambulance to save your life? So this is the crazy part, Um, you know, but God, this but is the God. crazy part. Uh, So when I when they got done shooting me, you know, uh, you know, he told me, man, you know, you tell anybody we're coming back and we're going to kill you. Yeah. You know, I'm like, man, I ain't taking no chances, you know, uh, being a pastor, you know, you're in that spotlight. I know I'm easy to find. So, you know, I tell myself, man, hey, man, I'm good. You ain't got to worry about me. I said, man, you just, saying this while yeah, you shot yeah, 10 times? Him, man, just, just leave me, you know, just leave me. I'm good, you know. And so uh, when they drove off, you know, I felt my pockets. Now, mind you, 
Oh, uh, they had emptied they out had my pockets, emptied out your but they pockets. forgot my keys. Okay. So uh, this sounds crazy, but I'm sitting there, I'm laying there, and I'm looking up, and there's no cars coming. So I'm like, man, I can't wait for nobody to come because, yeah. you know, it, it might take too long. Yes. Uh, you know, my, they got my phone, my iPad, yes. you know, all my forms of communication. So yes. I'm sitting there thinking. And so the only thing I could think of, you know, was to try to drag myself to my truck. Yes. And I knew if I at least was able to make my way back onto the street, you know, even if I get pulled over or, whatever. you know, traffic get behind me, whatever, at least, you know, I got a better chance of getting help. Yes. And so I got in my truck. And I started driving. And when I tried to whip back onto the highway, I, I ended up going into a ditch. And uh, but thank God, somehow it's a deal on my truck right now. <laughs> uh, but but somehow, you know, I came out on the other side of the ditch. And so I, I just started driving as fast as I could, trying to get back to a, it's a city um, next to Leland called Indianola. And that's where I actually lived. That's where my house was. Yeah. And so uh, I started trying to get there as fast as I could because mm-hmm. I knew it was a hospital right off the highway. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I got I got close to uh, the hospital. And there's a uh, gas station that sits right there. Mm-hmm. And so I pulled into the gas station because I knew I couldn't get myself out of my truck, mm-hmm. you know. So I said, man, if I get to the gas station, maybe I could get somebody to help me, you know, somebody to lead me over to the hospital, um, you know, anything. And so when I pulled in, um, one of my people that, that went to my church, a young lady and her friend, they had just been in service. And they were, you know, they're at the gas station getting snacks or whatever they were doing. So when I pulled in, you know, they said, hey, pass. And I rolled down the window. You know, I said, hey, help me. When I rolled down the window, of course, they saw me, you know, started screaming. But, you know, one of them jumped in the passenger seat. The other one led me uh, to the hospital. They jumped out, went in there, got the, you know, got the doctors or whatever. They came out. Now, the first thing they asked, you know, is this gang involved, you know, um, what is it? You know, they tell them, no, this is our pastor. You know, this is not anything like that. You know, yeah. y'all got to do everything y'all can to help. Yeah. And so from there, uh, thanks be unto God, you know, they did everything they could to help me. Um, they airlifted me to the big hospital in Jackson, yeah. you know, and uh, got a hold of my parents and everything like that. And, yeah. you know, from there, God did the rest, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so now what are some of the things you deal with today? Uh, so right now, um, you know, at first, uh, they had to, uh, pre- completely do reconstructive surgery on my arm. Mm. Uh, my arm was completely shattered. Uh, mm. from what I was told, it was dang near hanging off. Mm. And, uh, so they had to do reconstructive surgery on that and, uh, which included taking a vein out of my right leg. Mm-hmm. Um, and from doing that, uh, a couple of nerves actually got damaged in my leg. So, mm. um, for a while I was in a wheelchair when I first got out the hospital, um, but some of the injuries I sustained outside of that was again, of course, you know, the shattered arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they hit my, uh, body six times, which included shattering my, uh, my right side of my rib cage completely. Mm-hmm. That was shattered. Uh, they hit my right lung. Mm-hmm. Um, and so those were probably the three major injuries that I sustained. So I had to have a, a chest tube at first. Mm-hmm. Um, that was in me for about a week and a half. Uh, like I said, the ribs took a while to heal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my arm and my leg are the main things I'm still dealing with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I said, thanks be to God, I, I started walking on my own probably around the middle of July. Mm-hmm. Um, I started, you know, being able to walk more on my own because mm-hmm. at first, like I said, I started off in a wheelchair. Um, then they put me on a walker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, I started trying to push myself, you know, started walking more on my own. So now I say probably about 80 percent of the time I walk on my own. So how did you, how did you walk with a walker with one hand? Oh, so there's actually a thing called a hemi walker. Okay. Uh, a hemi walker is actually like a one handed. It's like a cane, but it's a walker. OK. And so it folds out. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. I had never yeah. seen it before. But yeah. um, when I was in the hospital, uh, I was in the hospital out here one time. Uh, I was having some complications, and that's when they, you know, introduced it to me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I had never seen that before, but yeah. So you had to come back home, obviously. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. When I woke up, you know, it was crazy. Uh, the, the last thing I had remembered was uh, I was talking to the doctor. Um, you know, I was talking to the doctor in Indianola. You know, I'm asking him, I'm like, man, you know, am I gonna live? Like, you know, what's gonna happen? And the doctor's telling me, you know, he like, man, I don't know. He says, sir, I'm not gonna make you no promises. Uh, he said, but we're gonna try to do everything we can. You know, he said, you know, when your lungs are hit, you know, you've been hit a lot of time. He said, you know, we don't, we don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, but one thing he said, man, you know, I tell everybody this. You know, the doctor was looking at me. And he said, man, one thing I can tell you, sir, is he said you're in the right profession because he yeah. said if I ain't never knew it was a god. So I know it is now. You know? I know it is and today. So, uh, I, I just remember, you know, next thing I remember, I, I started kind of, you know, do, uh, 
losing consciousness a little bit. Um, I remember they called uh, the, the the bishop that have moved me down there the pastor, Bishop mm-hmm. uh, Kimberly Randall. Mm-hmm. He's like a god dad to me. Uh, they, they had called him, and uh, I know he had came up to the hospital. I'm not sure who was with him. I couldn't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember him, you know, calling my parents, getting a hold of my parents. And next thing I know, I went unconscious. And uh, when I woke back up, you know, I was in uh, Jackson, you know, and uh, it was like, I think the next day, probably like, at like eight o'clock at night. So I had been unconscious for hours, hours. you know. They had did whatever surgeries and everything. And when I woke up, my parents was there, my sister was there, you know, they had all flown down there to get me. And uh, you know, once I finally uh got released from the hospital, uh I wasn't, you know, able to fly, so we had to take a train. They had to take a train to get me back home. Man. And so uh yeah, that's what we ended up doing. They got me home as soon as they could. Uh I mean, I'll tell you immediately, the first chance they could, as soon as I was able to get on the train, uh, you, know, they, you know, they paid to get a, a special type of um, car that has the beds on it or whatever on the train. And so uh, that's okay. that's how they transported me home. So, yeah. Man, listen to this story, y'all. Y'all got to yeah. understand it's a buck guy situation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You had enough strength to get up into your vehicle. And it was the only choice. <laughs> yeah. Was, or you was going to lay out there and die. Yeah, it was the only choice. You know, let's tell everybody, um, you know, when you're in a situation like that, it's like a, it's a life or death choice. You yes. Because I'm looking around and I'm like, man, if I lay here, it's a good chance. Not only will I die, but I mean, there's no telling when somebody will find, find you. So, you know, I'm like, man, I, I got one choice, you know, and, uh, there's one attempt to save my life. So that right there, that'll make you muster up all the strength you have. Everything. You know, yeah, that'll give that'll make you get all the strength you have. And uh, like I said, by the time I got to the hospital, uh, like I said, I couldn't even get myself back out the truck. I'm telling them, like, you know, I can't move. I'm in too much pain. Yep. You know, and so they had to. I don't even know how they got me out the truck. I can't even tell you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, something like that will make you muster up all the strength that you can find. You know. And honestly, were these guys? Did they have on masks, hats, hoodies? Yeah, they had on uh, like black beanies. They, I remember them having on all black. And uh, like I said, it was so dark, I couldn't really tell. You know, I couldn't really see that well. Um, and then, of course, you know, I trying not to look at them in the face. I was trying not to do anything that would uh, cause them to, you know, actually finish kill the you. job. You yeah. know, just being honest. Because I'm like, man, you know, you done hit me this many times. I'm pretty sure y'all what y'all you know what your intentions are at this point so you know i wasn't trying to look nobody in the eye you know do anything mm-hmm. um that would cause them to you know feel threatened or you know feel like i was going to you know tell or whatever yeah. you know so yeah yeah and what was this over what kind of things did you have in your bag and then uh, on you so in my backpack um you know uh people it's a bad habit i had i had to you know stop now of course but uh, i had a habit of i love to keep cash on Okay, you know, that's just how I am, a okay. country. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I probably had probably like two thousand dollars on me. Being okay. honest, um, had, yeah, probably had about two thousand dollars on me. Um, had a brand new iPad in my backpack. You know that that I preach from, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know some glasses, pretty expensive. Uh, clergy chain. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, probably like some nice expensive cologne. Yeah. Uh, my wallet, of course, had some had a nice amount of cash in it. Um. You know, iPhone, you know, things like that. So yeah. it was, you know, it was some pretty valuable things in there. So, yeah. And, but do you think that they knew who you were? Do you think they cased you out? Oh, yeah. Before? I, oh, yeah. I, yeah, definitely. I mean, wow. especially being, you know, in a small town like that. And, uh, you know, like I said, again, being in that limelight, you know, especially anywhere you go, being a young pastor, mm-hmm. you're going to have that attention on you. So, yeah, it's no doubt in my mind about that. How long you been pastoring now? Uh, I've been pastoring now four years. What's the name of the church? Uh, so we just changed our name. Okay. Um, when I came back, uh, you know, of course, my congregation out here uh, was still uh, together as well. Yeah. You know, so when I came back, um, we decided to change the name from New Corinth to New Life. New Life. So, so, yeah, we just <laughs> held our first service uh, actually Sunday night. So, And where are you located? Uh, right now we're located at uh, 1501 South Commerce, uh, which is right off of Charleston and Commerce, around the corner from uh, the Premium Outlet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you get those pictures I just emailed? Thank you. Um, so at the end of the day, what was your lesson that you learned in this situation that you went through? What is your, some of the, the, the learning lessons you take away from this? Uh, you know, in this situation, it's been a lot, actually. Okay. Um, you know, because for one, uh, it's really just 
um, the biggest thing is just God, you know, just showing you how powerful he truly is. You know, okay. it's one thing to hear about it and preach about it, but uh, to see like a real life example in your own life play out like that. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, man, you know, it's no denying that that was nothing but God. You know, it's no, no way you survive something like that. That's crazy. That's unheard of, yeah. you know. And uh, the other thing, man, it's been so many other lessons just, you know, in patience, um, you know, having to have the patience of, you know, just sitting back and allowing myself to heal. Okay. Um, that was one of the hardest things because, you know, I went literally from uh, preaching two or three times a week, you know, yeah. traveling. Thank you. Uh, Sunday services, you know, the whole nine yards to doing nothing, not yeah. being able to do anything, yeah. you know, which is, that's frustrating, you yes. know, then you take uh, being an able-bodied young man, you yes. know, 24 years old, and now you can't even do for yourself, you yeah. know, that's something uh, I had never experienced before, you know, you know, never having to be hospitalized, I think I've probably been hospitalized, man, like, 10 times, yeah. you know, yeah. um, so it's different things no like broken that. bones uh, before. And yeah. Like you that. know, like, it's <laughs> like, man, so, um, going through something like that is really takes a lot of patience and just, you know, trust in God to finish the job, finish healing you. And, uh, another thing to be honest was, um, the gossip, you know, the rumors, you know, people try to come up with their own stories, figure out what happened. Um, one of the craziest things I tell everybody that, uh, I had to get my mind used to was when I came back, mm -hmm. you know, you had people out here that had, you know, put out different stories and, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, you know, and I'm sitting there trying to figure out, well, you know, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 1,500 miles away. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when I came back, um, that was one of the toughest things to get past because, you know, I'm looking at it as, you know, I'm down, you know, y'all kicking me while I'm yes. down, you know, and everybody, oh, you know, God's getting ready to elevate you. And, you know, you know, you have haters and enemies and I'm sitting there looking at it like, you know, I'm not worried about none of that right now. I'm yeah. worried about trying to, you know, get There's my health back, back to you health. know, <laughs> get my, you know, get my life back, you know. And so uh, that was probably, to be honest, one of the biggest things um, I had to get past. And it taught me how to really just focus on God, to be honest. That's, yes. that's what it really taught me firsthand, just how yes. to focus on God. Okay. Yeah. Now. You won't be keeping large amounts of cash on you no oh, more? Oh, man, listen. No. <laughs> all debit. All debit. Man, all debit. You hear me? All debit, <laughs> Um, And then what about checking your surroundings now? Yeah, uh, yeah you know. Um, are you are you paranoid at any point in your life? Uh, you know, that's probably been, yeah, one of the biggest things because I'm a I'm the type of guy that I'm, I like to roll alone anyway. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the things, you know, some of my brothers that I had, you know, gotten close to down there, yeah. you know. I uh, was always on me about, you know, it's like, man, you know, we try to watch out for you, but you know, yeah. you're always going off by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so uh, one of my brothers, man, when I, when he first got to me, you know, um, when I first became conscious again, you know, that was the first thing he said was, you know, what was you doing out by yourself? You know? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it was really taught me, you know, just watching your surroundings because, uh, you know, it's a cold world we live in. Yes. And sometimes we get so comfortable, um, that we kind of, you know, become lax, but you know, it truly yes. is a cold world. Just being honest, you know, yes. as hard as that may be to hear, you know, it's a cold world that we live in. So listen, man, I was, uh, mugged and jumped yeah. in November, 2020. Mm. I made a post about it because mm. it really, it hurt me more than it physically hurt me. Yeah. Like it was five young cats. I'm walking to the store. It was a late evening, but I'm in yeah. my community. I'm yeah. in the suburbs of Las Vegas. Exactly. I live in Centennial Hills. I'm not expecting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't walk to the store a dozen times before this. Exactly. I've been up there at that point five, five and a half years. Yeah. Never have I ever, right? Exactly. So I'm walking to the store, minding my business. I'm actually writing a song. Um, and the Lord told me before I even left the house, tie your shoes up tight. Mm. Take one earbud out and turn the music down a little bit. Mm. I had no idea what was about to transpire. Yeah. If I wouldn't have did those things he told me, bro, I don't know what would have happened after that. Exactly. But I'm walking and I see these guys scurrying to their little car. Mind you, they had a Mercedes Benz, <laughs> but they scurry into their car. And I seen that. Keep walking, minding my business, writing my song. And next thing you know, they're all behind me like some hyenas. Wow. With like these devilish grins, devilish wow. smiles. And I'm just like, so I'm thinking they know me. You know, I'm Isaac mm -hmm. Jones. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm popular in the city. Yeah. What's good? No. Run it, nigga. Wow. I'm like, run what? Like, at yeah. this point, I've never been robbed before in my yeah, life, so exactly. I don't even know, like, I'm <laughs> I'm really in this position right yeah, now. Exactly. Wow. And, uh, you know, one tried to steal off on me. It was a lot more said than that, because I'm just like, at this point, you know, Black Lives Matter, you yeah. know, all these things, and I'm just like, bro, what are we doing right here? Like, yeah. are you really trying to rob me right now? You feel me? Exactly. Run, run it, whatever. I'm like, I don't have nothing to run, literally. I yeah. have, like, my... my um. 
my wallet and my cargo bottom. Yeah. I got my phone in my pocket, and I don't, I don't even know if I had anything else on my other side of me because I'm literally just walking to the store. Yeah. And basically, uh, when he tried to hit me, I'm like, it's five of them. I got to run. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm running. They grab me by my hoodie. We all on the ground, two of us on the ground. They all kicking me, stomping me. Like, and one of them finally says, let's go. Like, it's worth nothing. You know what I mean? And they yeah. have my phone. You know what I'm saying? So they all run, and I'm just like, wow. I finished walking to the store. You mm. feel me? I'm just like, this is crazy. Did that just happen to me? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and they got in the car, drove off, seen them drive all the way up. They passed me, drove all the way up. And I'm just like, that just really happened. But they got my phone. Oh, well, whatever. It's just a phone. Yeah. You know, I got my, my debit and all that yeah. still down here. And I'm calling my phone, trying to figure out the location, this, that, and the third. I get my phone that morning at like 8, 9 in the morning. A white man named Rich Mahan had my phone. Mm. You feel me, Rich Mahan? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you brought me my phone, man. You know wow. what I mean? And I just, at that point, I could either be mad at all these young black men and yeah. go off on a tangent and uh, or I could just be like, no, nah, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Exactly. I don't know them boys. I don't. Exactly. I can't even tell you their faces like that no more. Y'all going to have to deal with God because y'all touch his anointed one. Exactly. So That's you, true. You feel me? That's true. And at the end of the day, I live by that. I live by the word, the scriptures, everything that was spoken to me and over my life. That's on y'all. Y'all don't yeah. know who y'all just touched. Exactly. And, I, man, I had real homies, real people ready to ride. I told them, no. Yeah. We're not doing all of that. Exactly. You know, I'm not even in that. But I appreciate your love. But you know I'm not right. You know exactly. I don't want y'all to do that. Exactly. Yes, I was angry. Yes, I was mad. Yes, I was. I felt violated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when I, when you told me, I'm like, bro, that has, that is vastly different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really almost lost your life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, it's funny you say that because, I mean, uh, me and my uncle was talking. Uh, my blood uncle. Uh, yeah. He came out here and saw me uh, when I first got back. You know, he lives in D.C. Uh, and he came to see me, you know, and he said, man, it gives you a whole different perspective when we think about Black Lives Matter. Yes. Um, which had always been my point of view. Um, my argument with people would be, you know, um, before we could hold them accountable, you know, we got to hold us accountable. accountable. So like I told him, I said, man, you know, I didn't get shoot by a white policeman. Nope. I didn't get shoot by a white person, nope. you know. <laughs> so it's like, man, yeah, we say Black Lives Matter, but. It's like, man, first we got to make them matter to each other, you know. Do they really matter? Exactly. You so, know what I mean? And know. so, like you said, it only matters to a certain amount of people. Exactly. And and as long as we stick together and we love on each other like this yeah. here, a yeah. brotherhood. Like, bro, last time I think I even seen you physically was when we did the concert, uh, the invasion tour at your church. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, because you know what? Um, Yeah, because what was that? Probably what, June? What was that? July? Like June 2020 something? Yeah, you know what? That was, no, that was September, wasn't it? It was definitely 2020. Yeah. So, right? yeah, because I, I know I left not too long after that. Um, Let's see, I think October, Uh, I went down there. I went down south um, to preach revival. And uh, not too long after that, you know, that's when, you know, plans started to form, you know, mm -hmm. for me to transition. Down there. So, uh, yeah, after that, I was kind of back and forth for a few months. Mm -hmm. Um. Until December is when I made the official announcement. So, right. yeah, I was, yeah, so yeah, that was, after that, it was really when I started making my transition. And I, I say that to say, although we may not talk. Yes, sir. Although we may not be in each other's presence, you're still my brother. Yes, sir, most definitely. You feel me? Most definitely. And we're going to have each other's back. Most definitely. You know what I mean? So that's why I want people to know you ain't got to talk to these people every day. Exactly. You ain't got to act like it's a problem when you don't talk every day. Exactly. You feel me? That's real. That's, that's my real. guy right there. Exactly. And for him to hit me, I'm like, bro, you got to come tell your yeah. story. Yes, sir. On my show. <laughs> yes, sir. And it ain't nothing about nothing else but glorifying God. That's right. Bro. They that's know right. my story. They know but God situations. Exactly. And if I got a chance for somebody to tell their but God yes, situation sir. Yes, sir. like that, that's what it is. Do it. I ask yeah. everybody almost, I probably ask about 70% of my, my, my special guests, what is your mm. bug guy situation? Yeah. You know what I mean? But you already had one. Yes, sir. I want you to tell it. Uh, let's let's roll these pictures real quick, man. This is, uh, tell me about these pictures. Yes, sir. You were unconscious at this point? Yeah, um, at that point, uh, those were pictures that were sent to me. And uh, from, what, uh, from what I understand, you know, at that point, uh, they had to airlift me from uh, Indianola to Jackson. Okay. And so uh, there's a um, helicopter pad right across the street from that hospital. And so uh, they had to, you know, put me in the ambulance, take me across the street to the pad, you mm -hmm. know, and airlift me. So at that point, um, 
from what I was told, I was unconscious. Uh, I'm on a ventilator. Um, you know, by this time, uh, people, you know, have found out what's going on, different loved ones, you know, down there that I formed relationships with, you yep. know, people from the church. Surrounding you. Um, you know, uh, fellow pastors and, you know, people in ministry. Um, at that point, they had gathered, you know. And everybody got the call. And you know, what's crazy was I didn't notice, but I found this out um, actually in July when I got ready to preach my first sermon after, you know, my first sermon returning. Yeah. Uh, I had found out that uh, at that point, um, everybody that was there, including my, you know, my parents as they was on their way, they didn't know I was, I was going to live, yep. you know, at that point, um, they're thinking I'm pretty much DOA. getting ready to be out of here, yeah. you know, um, you, you know, yeah, they, they pretty much thinking I'm in my last moment. So yeah. everyone's gathering up there, not knowing what's, you know, getting ready to happen, what the outcome is going to be. And so, uh, I, I kept those pictures of my dad can't even stand and look at them. Yeah. But, uh, I kept those pictures because, you know, it's a reminder, like, you know, literally people, everyone had gathered, you know, crying, you know, sad, praying, you know, uh, not knowing literally if I was going to wake up, if I yeah. was going to wake back up, you know, yeah. so, uh, not knowing if that was literally going to be their last time seeing me, you yeah. know, so, uh, and that, you know, that's crazy. You know, it may be hard, you know, to look at, but, you know, it's a constant reminder. Literally, you know, God is good. Absolutely. God is good. Absolutely. When I got sent the pictures. Yes, sir. Is when it, it hit real. Because yeah. you are, you talking to me. Yeah, exactly. So I ain't no, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like, so at the end of the day, I'm like, bro, you was wrapped up like a mummy. Yeah. They had yeah. you like. They, but it to me, that picture looked like we about to save his life. Yeah. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah. Now, I don't know about the. I don't know part, but that picture looked like we got to save him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And at the end of the day, bro, I don't know. We'll never know exactly. what the outcome would have been if you didn't know God already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm honestly, I mean, I honestly believe like when I look back on it, um, it was so many little things that you could see like God did in order for me to be able to. <laughs> <laughs> um, even get just getting to the hospital. Yes. Um, it was so many little things working in my favor, yes. you know. Them leaving with, your keys. Yeah, them leaving my keys. Um, you know, me when I, you know, went into that ditch, the momentum that I had, you know, allowed me to Push come you up, out. you know, to uh, the other side because I would have got stuck. It's it was a wrap. wrap. You know, you bleeding out right there in the yes. truck, you know. So, um, coming out on the other side, uh, I mean, uh, one of my one of my people, you know, being at the uh, gas, gas station. station, you know, that was like, okay, good, I got somebody Crazy. to trust. You know, it was so many things that just was working in my favor that yes. night. It was just like, yes. you know, it, it had to be God, you know. And Do so, you have nightmares or any night terrors about the situation? Oh, I haven't. I had nightmares at first. Okay. Um, I had nightmares at first. Um, now, you know, they do, they, uh, diagnose me with, uh, you know, PTSD, of course. Okay. Um, I don't claim that, you know, I yeah. try to, I try to fight it as much as I can. Yeah. Um, I think like some of the toughest things are like, uh, when I, like from watching a movie, you know, I hear gunshots, you know, okay. make me jump. I feel it in my arm. Almost. Okay. Like, I, I feel like a sting in my arm, okay. you know, um, you know, like 4th of July was, that was tough. <laughs> 4th of July was, wow. that was, I was tripping on 4th of July, you wow. know, um, but yeah, so it's it's little things like that um, that you just it's hard you know it's hard to get by. Um, I mean, you know I trust God to get me through it. Yes, but I mean, yes. um, yeah, that's that's been you know some of the toughest things to get by because when you go through something like that, you know it's hard to get out your mind. You it's know, because it's like man, you know you don't expect it, so you know you don't you know you never know what's gonna happen. So you know it's it's yeah, yeah it's it's a mind game, but uh, yeah. it's it's you know I'm, I'm definitely trusting God to get me past it. But, yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's been my biggest thing. Uh. Just little things that remind me of it. Um, I'm a little bit more, you know, I'm, I'm more cautious at night. Um, I'm okay. constantly looking over my shoulder. Okay. It's not as bad out here because, you know, most places out here, you know, are lit up, you know. Yeah. Um, cameras, light. Cameras, you know, the whole nine yards. <laughs> the whole you know? nine yards. Now, if I was back in the South still, yeah. I probably couldn't do it. I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you because there's it's so many areas where you could be caught slipping. Yeah. You know, so you got that in the back of your mind at all times, you yeah. know. So, yeah, that's been probably the, the, the biggest things. Yeah. Did they tell you what type of bullets, type of gun they use? Uh, they did, but I was like, I was halfway out of it. Everybody okay. asked me that. Um, okay. But I remember them taking the bullets and uh, giving them to the detective. Okay. And so, uh, you know, it was such, you know, quick process, you know, because they were trying to, you know, yeah. get a head start on everything. And, and they uh, still on the run? Yeah, yeah. They still on the run? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And so, yeah, like I told them, uh, yeah, I didn't, you know, I wasn't sure what type of gun. I do because uh, I told them, of course, you know, it was so dark. I couldn't see. I do remember seeing it was an extendo clip on it, of course, mm. you know. Hit me ten times, you know. Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, I remember seeing the extendo clip, but yeah, that's 
that's that's all I can remember as far as details about the gun. Yeah. Sir, you are blessed. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. are anointed. No doubt. No doubt. You're gonna keep preaching that word. Yes, sir. You're yes, gonna sir. have a more firepower in yes, you. Yes, sir. I speak all those things into your yes, life, sir. sir. I receive that. Um, anything you want to tell the people before we get out of here? Uh, I mean, like I said, it's just uh, my my constant um, encouragement and message now is, I mean, God is real. Man. God is real. Uh, I tell people, you know, sometimes the biggest, um, the or let me say this, the best sermon you could preach is your own life, you know, yes. your own life story. And, uh, yes. you know, sometimes, man, people may not, you know, come hear me, you know, inside the church. You know, yeah. people may not ever sit inside, sit in a pew and listen to me or yeah. sit in a church chair. Yeah. Um, but them seeing me, you know, seeing what I've gone through, like I said, what the doctor said, you know, that right there is something that will stick with me for the rest of my life because it's undeniable. Yes. Okay. There's no other explanation. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's people. Um, I remember my, my, my God mom calling me crying, uh, because she said her friend, uh, his grandson had gotten shot like two times mm -hmm. and he died mm -hmm. and she called me crying. And she just was saying, man, the only thing she could think about is God is good. Mm -hmm. She was like, you know, her mind instantly went to, yeah. you got hit 10 times. Yes. And, you know, you still here, you know, you talking, yes. you know, uh, you know, you're in your right mind, yes. you know, even with the injuries I have, um, you know, I am eventually going to be a hundred percent again. So, eventually. you know, it's like, man, I'm not complaining, you know? Nope. So, uh, my biggest, you know, um, thing that I try to keep people to see is man, God is real. It's undeniable. Yes. It's undeniable. If you don't believe, man, just look at me. I mean, it's no other explanation. Yeah. I mean, no medical explanations, no science. I yeah. mean, it's nothing but God, you know? Nothing so, but God. Yeah. All right, man, I want to, uh, you know, put up my foodie flies. You know what I mean? Make sure y'all get at foodie flies for that catering, that meal prep, fri private dinners, cannabis infusion, and much more. They are licensed and insured. This is Comfort Food Made with Love. I'm talking about 725-300-2535. Listen to me. Call the number 725-300-2535. All right? It's located at Fort Apache and Flamingo. Pick up or delivery. They got the good burgers they got that good seafood they got what you need when i tell you take this number down 725-300-2535 let them know hot seat with icy jones sent you that is foodie flies catering meal pet private dinners cannabis infusion and more comfort food made with love all right man listen this is hot seat with icy jones i'm so thankful that my brother got to come through yes, sir. tell his story that but got situation make sure y'all run it back make sure y'all share tell a friend comment let us know you've seen it you know what i mean i'm gonna definitely share it i'm gonna take the clip i'm gonna put it out there on facebook because i ain't go live i'm like dang i ain't get to go live <laughs> however it doesn't matter it's right here on hot seat with icy jones make sure you subscribe to my youtube make sure you follow me on instagram and facebook hot seat with icy jones Hey, I'm also on TikTok now, all right? I.C.J.O.N.E.Z. God bless y'all. Love y'all. We out. Hot Seat with Icy Jones, Room Service Radio.